The major global driver of higher education development since really the 1960s and on up until the present, affecting different countries in different ways but affecting us all, is what the Europeans call massification, growth. All else stems from that. Everything else. Now there are other elements too, like the development of IT, which is fairly new in, in higher education. But the, the trend toward mass higher education is the underlying uh, 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 pattern. Uh, once upon a time, in most of our lifetimes, most higher education systems enrolled, believe it or not, about 5% of the relevant age group. The United States and Canada were the first countries to become mass higher education systems. In our case, starting in the 1930s. So we've had the longest experience with developing a system to cope with mass higher ed. And, and that's one of the key reasons, I think, why other countries look to the U.S. as kind of a model. And we've done it overall pretty well uh, over, over time. Um, uh, Twenty years ago there were 100 million students worldwide. Now there are 175 million students worldwide. Twenty years. The, the growth patterns you can see clearly in the in, uh, enrollment rates in different countries. And they are clear from around, around the world. Um, uh, most of the rich countries now enroll uh, 70 to 80 percent of the relevant age group. That's true in uh, Western Europe. It's true in Russia. It's beginning to be true in the Eastern European uh, 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 countries. Um, and that seems to be the kind of upper, upper limit of the relevant age group. Now, it becomes complicated because, you know, so-called non-traditional students in many countries are taking advantage of higher education opportunities and systems are changing to, to deal with, with them. Uh, the, the region of the world with the lowest enrollment uh, ratio is Africa, which is still except for South Africa and a few of the northern African countries, uh, under 10 percent, the tremendous growth to take place. The pattern in Latin America has been remarkable growth. Most of those countries are in the 30 percent up. Uh, and Asia, it's a mixed picture. And the two Asian giants, India and China, India now enrolls about 10 percent of its age cohort um, in, in higher education. China about 22 percent, with of course both of them huge population bases. Um, half the enrollment growth in the coming 20, 30 years will be just in those two countries alone. Because both countries have as national policies increasing in, uh, uh, access uh, in the Chinese case to about 60 percent in the coming 20 years, and in the Indian case, they don't have quite a, quite, quite a they, haven't, they haven't developed a number yet, but it's in that level. So massification. What has massification meant? It's meant overall lower quality. No question about that. It doesn't mean that the whole system is lower quality. It means that on average, the quality is lower. It will surprise you, and the following comment is based on just a back of the envelope estimate by me, not on real research. The average person who is today standing before a, a, a class in, in a post-secondary institution has as his or her uh, um, a degree qualification a bachelor's degree. So the quality of the academic profession has gone down, at least in terms of quali uh, qualifications. And m m almost all countries are very much concerned about that and trying to do something uh, about it. But that's an element. Overall quality declined. Systems become within themselves more unequal. You've got at the top research universities almost everywhere as a tiny part of a big system and a gulf between those 
world class or at least regional class institutions uh, and, the, and the mass part of, um, uh, of a national higher education system. So too, inequalities globally. And you just look at the, at the rankings, whatever you want to make of them, uh, and there are problems in the, the several global higher education rankings. Uh, very few developing countries among them. For that matter, very few Chinese universities among them. And no Indian universities in the top 100. Um, some of them think that the Indian Institute of Technology, which by the way isn't a university, it's a special, very fine s set of specialized institutions, are up there. But none of the main Indian universities. So inequality, we've also seen the rise of the private sector. And that is, in fact, globally, the private sector is the fastest growing part in, um, in these mass higher education systems because the state either cannot afford or feels that it cannot afford to fund uh, uh, enrollment growth in the, public, in the public sector. So we've seen the rise of the private sector. Most of the private sector, quite unlike the United States, is low end and for profit and has severe quality problems. So developing a private sector, which is inevitable, in the public interest, as I like to put it, is a key challenge for higher education systems. 